All right. And we're back with the Corrected View podcast. We have Dr. Nick Despeditas with us from Supercharge Your Practice. We have Nick on to help us answer practice manage- management questions, ortho K questions, myopia control questions. And we are going to address the second part of this question, which is I gradually increased my fees. I wonder if they are too high since most don't sign up even when their children's eyesight progresses over one diopter from the year prior. So I guess the the crux of this question is, um, how do you know what the right fee structure is? Uh, if you if you think you set your fees too high, like what is the barometer that you need to use uh, to, to figure that out? Nick, what do you think? Well, you can talk about chair costs. We could do it another time because that's really the, the, the business related uh, answer mm-hmm. is if you you look at how much it costs to run your practice every hour and you make sure your fees reimburse you uh, for that. But I like to view this as the gut question. If you're providing a service and you feel good about providing the service, it's most probably due because you're being reimbursed properly for that service. So for example, if you're accepting a vision care plan and when you see it and you look at this plan, you go, oh, this patient's from this plan ABC, you know you're not being reimbursed. doesn't take, you know, chair cost analysis. So in this doctor's case, to answer his or her question specifically, is that your fees have nothing to do with your conversion rate. You have to look at your procedures because I have charged over my, like, like, uh, like your dad, I've mm-hmm. been doing this for decades, and I've charged a variance of fees. And I notice it doesn't, it, the fees are not correlated with conversion, despite okay. what my colleagues are charging. That's just the story I'm telling myself. What depends on is how good or sloppy my systems are. So this doctor has to look at her or his systems. If you give the virtual phone call, you're leaving time for questions. We both said we ask the questions as doctors, but we allow the parents to ask the questions. Then we have to make their child feel safe, and we have to gain the patient's trust. And that takes time. It takes less time when you're recommended from a friend or family member, but it takes a lot of time. So there's a big difference if a referral source says, go see Dr. D., and you come and you meet me because you're a friend, a valued friend, and we talked about this with your dentist experience, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. recommends me versus me recommending myself saying, your son or daughter has progressed the diopter a year. That's a big jump. You need to do this procedure. Come and see me for a consultation. Well, now, wait a minute. This is a lot of me, me, me here. So you have to take the time to earn that patient's trust. So what this doctor is lacking is not, fee structure. It's really procedures. So we've outlined in this podcast from beginning to end a system of how you take a patient who's nearsighted, who can benefit from myopia control, how you get them to the consultation, what you do during the consultation and before the consultation, how you write a report after the consultation, how you email them within a week or so after they get the report, and you set a deadline and then you move on. That system in your hands will reap a 90% conversion rate if you just follow that recipe. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what your fees are. And if your fees are low, you'll say, boy, I'm not being reversed enough for all this time and effort that I'm doing. And if your fees are good when they sign up and you provide the treatment you like to provide in the way you like to provide it, you'll say, yeah, this is good. I don't mm-hmm. need to do a lot of other subspecialties. This is fulfilling my life, my values. Um, I enjoy working with kids. I enjoy helping them in a unique fashion like ortho K allows us to do. And I'm being reversed for my time and talent. And that's how you know you're doing a good job. So I would encourage this doctor to uh, follow this protocol and just don't get discouraged. It works. Like I, like I have no reason to... Real, no reason to lie to you. I just want to help you because it's helped me. Would you agree with the idea of, you know, setting your fees high and then if that's not working, it's easier to bring them down than to raise them up? What do you, how do you feel about no, that? No, I think, you know, sometimes we're our own worst enemy. Okay. So if you think your fees are high, that's going to come out in your personality. 
okay. you to come out of your presentation, you know, set the fees where you think it's fair for, mm -hmm. for your practice at your state. You're going to regulate that once you get referrals and you, your systems get better and things like that. But the story you tell yourself has to be, listen, if they're going to sign up, I need to at least charge this amount mm -hmm. and I'll be happy. If it starts getting, well, this was not worth it, then raise your fees. So it's really that gut check fee. And it doesn't lie to you. If you're doing a lot of ortho K and, or myopia control and you feel you're running on a treadmill, then your fees are too low. Mm -hmm. If you feel that you're embarrassed by your fees or your fees are too high, they probably are too high for the care you're providing. It's yeah. that it's that simple. Definitely. I, I, I feel like a lot of it also has to do with your commitment to your system. And you mentioned keeping track of data. And yes. I, maybe I'm a crazy person, but like I try to keep track of everything, yeah. uh, even in relation to the work that we do for the academy. When we run a meeting, I keep lots of notes and data on everything we did. Uh, you know, what kind of registrations we had, what kind of program we ran, what, you know, if we have uh, manufacturer breakouts where we bring in our great sponsors to, uh, you know, do a, like a 30 minute uh, class on something. Uh, what time of day we offered it, how long we offered it yeah. for. And I feel like what when I talk to uh, optometrists at other meetings, and this is co goes along with the don't dabble uh, concept, is that they start out, didn't work, they kind of lost interest in it. And yeah. I feel like it's more important to just keep going, keep trying, keep tuning, because uh, anything, whether it's podcasting or a patient in your chair, like you, if you get it right the first time, I mean, I feel like that's lightning in a bottle and run that's with true. it. That's but true. in my experience, I've never gotten good at anything without failing miserably at it first and then learning from my mistakes. Yeah, yeah. you and like, everyone else. Yeah, that's the only like people say, like, what are you good at? I'm like, I'm good at failing and then learning from my mistakes. That's what I'm good at. Very funny. That's like very I funny. Th that's what my skill is, is I will fail like nobody else and then sit down and look at what I've done and then adjust from there. So I feel <laughs> like it's important for us to say, like, if you're not converting to the, your myopia control program, or if patients aren't interested, it's like, do not get discouraged, yeah. keep tweaking your program. And I, I was, yeah, I wanted to ask you about that, like your personal, obviously you've been doing this a long time, you've seen high roads with it, you've seen success and failure with it. And so I'm, I wanted to, you know, uh, send that over to you as far as like, you know, how did you develop your program? And maybe there's a couple of pearls uh, that you can share. Yeah, very slowly, the the the, the uh, mistakes I made, well, like you, uh, I always like to say we failed much more than we've succeeded, but we've learned from our both. Mm -hmm. So when I began, uh, I just introduced it to my staff and shoved it down their throat, just like I do so many other things. So for example, all of us do this. We start doing punctal plugs or lipo flow. We're doing that, or we, we have a new anti-reflective coating or blue light filter lens. We're going to promote that. We, you know, we have this new OCT or this picometer or whatever the case may be. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what they're really thinking about is what's in it for me. Mm -hmm. So I think the key to my success is getting my staff engaged. And we talked about this last time. Do you spiff your, your staff? Right. No, we can't. If you do, if your staff gets motivated by incentives, then they're not going to stay with you a long time. You have to answer the question, what's in it for your staff? And for my staff, when I introduced this over 20 years ago, is we were going to drop all vision plans. And they scared. But I said, look, just envision a practice where we don't have to do all these forms and, and do these uh, gymnastics of selling the second pair first. And, you know, this all these things and the paperwork and the audits. Mm -hmm. and they're like, wow, that's a good that's, that's a good life. But in exchange, we're going to introduce this myopia control concept. Patients can be challenging to deal with. I, there's a lot of learning curve. But since that time, we don't work Saturdays. We're slowly, we see three patients an hour as opposed to six or eight an hour. We've talked about these. These are all mm -hmm. benefits that have kept my staff for time. So that's the one key is like, uh, is engage your staff by telling them what's okay. in it for them. Okay. And the other key is make a commitment. Uh, 
I decided long ago, I remember it like it was yesterday, I like dealing with pediatric uh, population. Mm -hmm. I like seeing kids. I like making a difference in their lives that the general uh, eye professional cannot. I like seeing them over. I like seeing them grow and things of that nature. That pushes my values, my buttons, and that's why I've devoted my practice with it. So if you're just doing the ortho K for a revenue stream, and by the way, I get this a lot recently. My phone blows up. Well, Nick, times are different. Would you recommend I do VT or would you recommend I do dry eye? Would you recommend I do dry eye? Would you recommend I do myopia control? And they're lost before they even begin. They're asking mm. the wrong question. You could be successful in any of those. Certainly you have examples out there. So what do you enjoy? What really right. turns your buttons as a clinician? So I wouldn't, I, I, to be successful, you have to enjoy doing it. It doesn't mean my day is Disneyland every day. Right. I would venture to say my day is the anti-Disneyland 90% of the time because I'd be lying to you. Right. But that 10% makes up for all the other hassles that I endure. Like we all endure in private practice. For sure. So it's nice to feel that there, there's someone out there that goes happily along their day every day, doesn't fail like you, mm -hmm. you know, but they, they're all fooling themselves. Right. Oh, my, my, my watch is having trouble hearing me. <laughs> so, anyway, so that that's my advice. It's, it's generalized advice, but it's damn good advice. It is damn good advice. Yeah, for sure. And that's, uh, that's why we have you on. I think we're going to end it there unless there's anything else that you wanted to add. Uh, I've got tons more questions, and and I'm well, sure the audience does as well. Write them down. R write them down because with each uh, tidbit we gave today, we can just dive into them. Like, how mm -hmm. do we keep stats? What stats do we keep? We talked about a lot of stats already. If you notice, I said one out of seven mm -hmm. referrals from my exam chair come into the consultation room. That's a stat. I talked about the conversion rate. The conversion rate is the number of people who come in for a consult that convert into the program. And I also talked about a fill rate, how many consults I have per week and how, to, how many of them are filled prior to the week starting. So we can dive into that or anything else the members want. I encourage sure. them to send you questions. I'm happy to address any of the ones that I am capable of answering. And there's multiple ways that our audience can do that. If you're a member of the AAOMC, we have that Discord channel. You'll get an update on your phone. You can chat in real time with uh, hundreds of other uh, doctors all over the United States and the world. And we also have uh, an email group as a part of the AAOMC membership, which allows members to come in, send an email to the entire group with a question, yeah. and that also works. You can email us specifically at thecorrectedview at gmail.com. There is the AAOMC Facebook. So please send us your questions. We'll we'll put them to Dr. D and, uh, and we'll be able to deliver lots more great content. So great. Nick, thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you, Matt. I always Appreciate love talking it. with you. That's why I, I'm too. excited I to do this with you every month. So thank you very I, much. And I look forward to talking you. with you again next time. All right. Thank you. Take care, Matt. You too. Bye.